is your first impression? My first pres- impression that I ever did? No, the no. first one you want to start with today. Shannon Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shannon, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Here we go. I'm going to ask you questions. So, I'm going to say, uh, so what, <laughs> what, uh, what was your favorite sport growing up as a kid? Uh, my favorite sport growing up as a kid. As a kid. Pro- probably. I like football. Football then basketball. Basketball. Did you ever play baseball? Was that nah, nah, I was scared no. of the ball. So how good were you in basketball? Could you dunk? I could. I you was could better dunk? in basketball than I was football. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So uh did you play in high school? Did you start in grade school? What did you start in? Uh I played coming up. I mean, obviously, you know, you did all the sports. You played football, yeah, football. ran track, played right. basketball. Right. And so I played all the way through. Uh started playing, I was probably about fourth or fifth grade and played all the way through high school with Okay. Them. Okay, um, what was your, uh, favorite, uh, event in track and field? Were you fast? I was. I ran on the relay teams. I really didn't do a whole lot of, uh, individual okay. sprints. I was a, a field event guy, so I long jump, triple jump through triple the disc, jump. but I was on the four by one and the four by four. Four by, I was on the four by one. Okay, I was the first leg. Oh, first leg. And like my grandmother said, if you ain't a frog, you better jump in the pond. You know, <laughs> I know that don't mean shit. That don't mean nothing. That will never make no sense, but all the things. <laughs> People are afraid to agree with me because I'm a big motherfucker and I beat your ass. But anyway, <laughs> so let me ask ahead. you a question. How did you how did you stumble upon <laughs> yeah. like, you know what? I can do him. How long did you have to practice and how many did you play it back? Like, OK, OK, make sure I get the the boys in play because you have the mannerisms. Yeah, I was watching you, you know, on FS1 and I was like, I think I could do him. You know, I just was right. like, I was like, Skip. And then Skip helped me. Yeah, <laughs> Skip, Skip, hey, Skip, Skip. Listen, Skip. Skip, I'm going to tell you this, right? I've been in the NFL for a long time, <laughs> right? And I used to, uh, I never had a toilet. <laughs> I had a doo-doo outside in the backyard. I'm like, hey, Skip, I'm going to tell you that right now. No, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, now, how the hell are you going to tell me that the East is going to beat the West? Come on, Skip. <laughs> Come on. Hmm? Tell me. <laughs> you know, I, and I just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's like with a lot of impersonators. Right. You got Pharaoh. You got, uh, uh, Ari Spears and it's just, you just, it just, you hear it. And if it's in your range, it's a natural gift. It's right. like when musicians can just go, all right, let me just play. You know, they can play something right. and tune. It's like when they tune it with a piano or a horn, right. it's the same shit. Like one of my fav, my first impersonations was, was, uh, Ali. Okay. When I was like five. Okay. Cause my, Parent, my um, relatives come from Nigeria, okay. and they would say, "Do do, do Muhammad Ali? We will give you one dollar." Do I'd be like, "I'm fast, I'm pretty, I shook up the world, I'm the greatest." I told you how a cold sell you too ugly. Joe Frazier's too ugly. Ken Norton's too <laughs> ugly. Uh, George Foreman's too ugly. I'm fast. I must be the greatest. I used to do that at five, right? Right. And so I was like, "Okay, I could do voices." And so I would t- cartoons, cartoon right. characters, and what's up, Doc? I would do that. Right. So I was just always into imitating people. And then when I started comedy, actually, when I started comedy, it was like my first my first time I was in a comedy team for a year. OK. All right. Yeah, this is Chicago. I'm from Chicago. You know, shout out to all the Chicago comedians. Because I heard the Chicago. They say Chicago got the best comedian. That's what Lil Rel told me. But uh, uh, Lil Rel might be right on that one because Chicago. What, what about the DMV? You know, they got Quake and, and they got, Listen, man, I ain't from the DMV. So <laughs> all that. I said it. I said Chicago got the best. You got me. You got Dion Cole. You got D-Ray Davis. You got Lil Rel. Bernie Mac. Bernie. Shout out to Bernie Mac. Rest his soul. And there's other cats. My man, Evan Lionel, who literally started Bernie Mac in his career, who literally started comedy for black comics in Chicago. Evan Lionel, got to give him his credit. But there's a lot of... A lot of great comics from Chicago. You got Adele Gibbons. Yes. You, you oh yeah. Adele Gibbons. You got oh oh um what's um oh God from the talk. Ah, oh Cheryl, Cheryl Underwood. Underwood is from Chicago. We got a lot of great and a lot of younger people coming up. But yeah, we're all at Craig Robinson. Right. Okay. Craig Robinson yes. from Chicago. So you have a lot. It's something about Chicago. We're all different. Mm-hmm. We're all different styles. Everybody says none of you are, are the same. I said it's something about Chicago. But I started out in a comedy team. Right. And a team with another guy was Godfrey and Alexander. And, and our, my first time on stage, it was impersonations. I, we would, it was a duo thing. So he played like a hypnotist and he would hit, it was some corny shit, but he would hypnotize me and shit. He's like, Oh, I'm a hypnotist. I'm going to make you do different people. So my first was Bill Cosby. Okay. And I know now Cosby is kind of a, 
taboo. Taboo, but fuck it. You know, let's go for it. it so I'd be like, you see, the people and you got to understand, I was just now, but do, now, but do, but now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I did Cosby. Then I did Johnny Carson. Okay. Because I said, you know, nobody's seen a black dude do Johnny Carson. So Correct. I would go, wow, good stuff. I did not know that. Right. Wow. <laughs> Shannon, this is a great show. Wow. <laughs> wow. I would do that. So it was Ali. It was, those were my first impersonations, but I never really, I didn't dwell on impersonations because if you, if you, if you count, if you depend on the impersonations, your act gets corny. Right. So, and I, I made sure when I was doing comedy, um, in Chicago, I moved, I finally, I did it for about three years and I, I went solo. And you know what's so funny? The person who told me to leave my comedy team was Steve Harvey. The guy. Yep. So was that before? Were, before he told, were you uh, uh, impersonating him before or I, after? I, he told? I, oh, I was impersonating Steve only like three, four years ago. Okay, I never impersonated right. him. I wasn't interested, or, you know. But um, he told me because one day there was a club called All Jokes Aside in Chicago. Okay, it was the number one black comedy club for seven years. Shout out to Raymond Lambert. Mary Lindsay and James Alexander. It was the number one club in Chicago. Cause a lot of times when you would do black con urban rooms, yeah. it would be a black night at a white establishment. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but this was Chicago was a black comedy club in the nineties that was open seven days a week. All right. And so that's from there. I went solo. I broke up with the guy that I was with. I wanted to go solo. So I how difficult doing... was that? Because you had got. I'm sure you guys had been together for what yeah, three, for four, about, five years. About two years. About two years. About okay. two strong years. Okay. You know. And I was like, I was a little because he. I don't think he was as passionate as I was in it. I was writing most of the sketches, and then I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go solo. So I started writing shit on the side, like just in case. Right. This does. This doesn't go well. I'm gonna do shit on my own. Right. So. I started writing stuff on my own and I, it was kind of easy to keep it moving. Right. Cause you know what I'm saying? I just started doing shit on my own. I didn't right. even really tell him. I okay. just started going on my own. And then, um, from there, um, I met, ran into TK Kirkland. Okay. Okay. Now people, if you know TK, TK Kirkland, teacher, the motherfucking K, I ran into him cause I would do shows with him at this club, all jokes aside. And then TK said, God three. Man, I need to take you to New York City. He's like, <laughs> I like your style. You kind of corny, but you know what? I like you and yeah. I'm going to find you a manager. So he found me and this is facts. He found me my first manager. Right. And, um, you know, remember Anthony Michael Hall? Remember yeah. Breakfast Club, the movie Breakfast Club uh, or, or six, uh, 16 Candles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little yeah, yeah. White with Molly kid, Ringwall. The little, the Molly Ringwall with the little <laughs> blonde kid. His dad was my manager. Okay. Tom Chistaro, they, they've passed him, him and his partner, David Kleeman. TK hooked us all up. It was me, Mike Epps. I was, it was like John Leguizamo. It was, wow. uh, yeah, it was, uh, Sandra Bullock. It was, and this is me moving to New York City. I packed up, drove 20 hours. You know what I'm saying? I said, it's time. I got my agent. Mm -hmm. This is all from TK doing this. Right. TK, TK at the time, criminal shit. Right. Taking people's credit cards. Getting arrested, shit. This man found me, my right, agency. Right. So as soon as I got to New York City on my own, I started doing the New York circuit. You know, that's when I um started to. I met. I would meet like a Tracy Morgan and all these. I'm like Chappelle. Everybody. I was meeting all kinds of people, and that was when you know I said, yeah, I'm gonna start doing this on my own. You know, I mean, when I drove 20 hours in a, right. a U-Haul truck, right? 20 hours with my friend Bernadette, who was in Love Jones. We drove 20 hours, wow. and then. From there, that was when I started to, you know, and my manager at the time said, you can do a lot of voices, but don't count on that. Don't make that your thing. Okay. Do build on your, your comedy, mm -hmm. build on your jokes and your material. And I said, okay, I'm going to do that. So the voice thing now, people didn't even know I did all these voices until the pandemic. Wow. Nobody knew because mm -hmm. I've, I've auditioned for, uh, different like sketch comedy shows, Living Color, didn't get that shit. Uh, SNL re rejected me three times, three times. I, I auditioned for SNL in, was it 98, 99? Right. It was me, Tracy Morgan, Jimmy Fallon, Kevin James, a lot of motherfuckers. I got a standing ovation that night because I did Cosby. I did Johnny Carson. I did, I don't even remember the other people I did, but I did a bunch of them, did a bunch of characters and I didn't even get it, get to the second round. Wow. Didn't even make it to the second round. And you know, as a young comic, I'm only three years in. I'm auditioning for SNL. Right. 
Eddie Murphy is my superhero? Eddie Murphy? Like, I might be able to do what Eddie Murphy did? Because I saw Eddie Murphy in college. Right, okay. When he was doing the Raw tour. Yes. He came by mm-hmm. our school, and I was like, shit. I was like, damn. And another, I have to give Tommy Davidson credit from the DMV. Mm-hmm. He came and performed in my college. He was one of the main guys that really influenced me to do comedy because in college is when I wanted to do comedy. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. My third year, I was like, I think I want to do comedy. I was a pre-med psych major, Mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, yeah, there was Tommy Davidson because Tommy Davidson, I showed him around the campus. He came to my campus, I showed him around. And then some years later, when I got to New York doing comedy in New York, I did this show called Premium Blend. Premium Blend is uh, on Comedy Central. That's when Comedy Central was funny. Right. Oh, <laughs> I know. That was, that's when it was live. That was a sneak diss. That's what it, <laughs> <laughs> but Comedy Central was dope, you know. And so Premium Blend is like you get up there and you do like seven minutes. So right. this was exciting for me. Right. I've never done TV, uh, comedy on TV. And what's funny as the as 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 things go round and round, Tommy Davidson was the host of that show I was on. Wow. And he remembered me. He said, you dude that showed me around your campus. I was like, yo, you're one of the main reasons I wanted to do comedy. Right. So it was Tommy Davidson. Let me get some of this cognac. <laughs> Ooh, boy, Shady, boy, you, you made you tough, man. Ah, uh, that cognac good, boy. I'm tell you right now, that cognac good. Like my grandmama said, if you ain't going to drink cognac, better get that Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's right next door to Sesame Street. Okay. You remember that famous song? Can you tell me how to get? Yes. How to get to Sesame Street? Mm-hmm. Just to see Shannon Sharp know Sesame Street. Today, I do. Right? You think of everybody grew like up him. on Sesame Street? Of course, Street. of course. <laughs> I can just see you singing. Can you tell me how to get? <laughs> how to get to Sesame Street? <laughs> do, come and come, come sing it. I want to see a big dude singing. <laughs> come and play. Everything's a okay. <laughs> I love Sesame Street, man. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Sesame Street's my favorite. My grandmother said. What you say? <laughs> if you don't know how to get to Sesame Street, I'm going to show your ass. I've <laughs> <laughs> been to a lot of countries. You've been to a lot of countries. I've been to a lot. I've been to a lot of countries. You haven't been to a lot of countries? You're so Southern. Yeah. He's like, I mean, I'll be, you know, I'll go Michigan. I've been to a lot of states. A lot of states. God, <laughs> I, mean, I go fishing over there. Yeah, yeah. better so down. And I'll get my, my RV. Just, yeah. Like my grandma said, man, if you ain't got nothing to do, stay where you at. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know right now, before you go any further, I'm going to side with Tip. <laughs> I just figured out. Cool. So whatever you say, I'm telling you. You're an Tip. asshole, man. <laughs> just, so, just so we clear, I don't want no bits of stuff. It's like that. He from South. I'm from South. Yep. I don't give a damn. Yep. Like yep. my grandmother said. <laughs> <laughs> if it's two frogs on the pond, we're going to sit up there on each other. What? <laughs> My parents would use broken English, pigeon English. And my sister knew when they were speaking straight evil because she was born there. She, 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 pigeon English. I don't know, but I know pigeon, pigeon toad. <laughs> pigeon toad. I know about pigeon toad, but I, yeah, I, know, I, know. I know about, I know about English. stool pigeon. Yeah. I know about pigeon toad. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.